Hey loves, welcome again to another beautiful episode of Reaction on the channel. If you see me for the first time, you're welcome. My name is Daniel and you're welcome to Daniel's React. All we do on this channel is to keep you entertained and engrossed with lots of entertaining videos and also educative videos so you don't miss out on any episode of Reaction on the channel. And for all our returning subscribers, thank you for always coming back to check on what we have to offer on this channel. You guys are the real MVP. I cherish and I appreciate you all. And if you are wondering whether to subscribe or not, and you are still watching this video, what are you waiting for? Smash the subscribe button, turn on your post notification bell, so you get notified by YouTube anytime videos drop on this channel. On today's episode of Reaction, it's going to be a lovely one and also an entertaining one, the one that will actually blow your mind, which is the title you've just watched or you've seen before coming to click on this video. So without wasting much of your time, without talking too much, let's dive into the video he came to watch. So let's move it, guys. February 28th, 1993. I was born that year. I was born in October of that year. What happened on it? February 28th, 1993? began a siege, a siege that many of you remember in vivid detail, and the siege was televised. It was a great example, a masterclass in federal overreach, in how an unnecessary sequence of events can lead to 82 people killed and 28 children. I'm of course talking about the Waco siege. At the centerpiece of that was David Koresh. It was in Waco, Texas. A 51-day siege ensued when David Koresh, obviously a lunatic, was accused of having a methamphetamine lab and trafficking drugs and having underage girls that he's impregnating. No one's defending that. But what you don't know about the story is that David Koresh left his compound rather frequently. In fact, he would go for jogs almost every single day. Why didn't the FBI just go pick up David Koresh when he was going for a run? He was going to a Walmart. He was filling up one of his cars with a tank of gas. No, the federal government made a decision. They made a decision to try to make an example out of David Koresh and the Branch Davidians. It's a major compound in the rural part of Waco. David Koresh was a perfect enemy and a perfect villain. He was a Christian he impregnated a bunch of women. He thought the world was ending. He had a very, very strong opinion on eschatology. He had a bunch of guns and weapons. Bill Clinton and Janet Reno, a lunatic, very similar to Merrick Garland, thought this would be a perfect time to show the full force of the federal government. Remember, this was after the terrible events in Ruby Ridge when the federal agents killed, quote unquote, anti-government forces via a sniper rifle up in Idaho. That's Janet Reno on screen right now. The federal government made a decision. They made a decision to escalate, not de-escalate. The government had an itchy trigger finger. Trigger finger. By doing so, 82 people died. They kept on escalating and escalating, raiding nurseries, using tear gas, engaging in open firefights with the Branch Davidians, despite the fact that David Koresh said he was going to surrender, that they were negotiating with him. This is one of the darkest moments in the history of the FBI and the ATF, the Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms Division. It's kind of forgotten. Now, some people you know, have done some shows on it. There's been Netflix specials and books. But if you ask a random person on the street, how many people died at the Waco siege, they'd say maybe 10, 15, 82 people were killed by our federal government unnecessarily because the federal government made a decision. And the decision was, we're in charge. They mobilized tanks. They burnt that compound to a crisp. And it was a soft declaration of force against innocent children and women. And of course, there were men opening fire on federal agents. No one is defending that. But the federal government, they were responsible for the opening salvo. Fast forward to what we learned yesterday. Yesterday, we learned that the Mar-a-Lago raid that happened in August of 2022, federal agents 
were given authorization by the Attorney General of the United States to potentially use deadly force and open fire on Secret Service agents. They did prep work with medics and documents show that the United States Secret Service, they were preparing against the United States Secret Service potentially for an intergovernmental firefight. This was a reckless, drama-seeking, destructive, almost cataclysmic, dare I say, were they trying to create a Waco 2.0 at Mar-a-Lago? It was basically an attack by one branch of government to another. And you think about all these quote unquote macho sniper raids they did to arrest January Sixers for no reason. It seemed as if the federal government hoped for a violent shootout, like to act as over the top and authoritarian as possible. In Waco, it was exactly the same thing. Waco was a show of force. I'm Janet Reno, and I'm in charge. We have tanks, and if you dare step out of line, I'm gonna bulldoze your home. You see that footage you see on screen? That's them going into a nursery. Look how cool we are. Look at all the funding that we have. Well, we learned yesterday, thanks to Julie Kelly's excellent reporting, and we have Julie Kelly coming on the program later this hour, is that the federal government, the FBI, They were given a green light to use potentially lethal force. They were prepping with medics where they were gonna have secret service agents firing on FBI agents. This was an ongoing negotiation over documents, over pieces of paper. And Merrick Garland went as far to say that we are going to use the full power of the FBI to potentially start a firefight with other federal agents. What if Donald Trump during the raid would have went down and said, stop it, stop it. And it would have been somewhat, let's just say, um, oppositional to the FBI. Could they have shot Trump? Is that what Merrick Garland was hoping for? The same way that they killed David Koresh, were they hoping that they could get a opportunity where Trump might've gotten really angry that they were going through Melania's closet? where Donald Trump was defending his property as a former president of the United States. And all of a sudden the FBI just opens up a pistol and boom, there it solves their Trump problem. And they've been wishing for that for quite some time. At a minimum, at a very baseline minimum, this was hugely reckless from people who wanted to feel tough. At the worst, they were looking at an excuse to use violence. And that's not a surprise. These federal agents have a itchy trigger finger. And Waco is the perfect example. Ruby Ridge is the perfect example. And not just against a former president, but against the United States Secret Service, they very well could have called the Secret Service and said, hey, we have a search warrant. Guys, just let us in. We don't want this to be any situation. Thank goodness the Secret Service complied. There is no template for this. A former president has never had his home raided. Jimmy Carter didn't have his home raided when he's been in hospice. Bill Clinton has had his home raided. The Secret Service doesn't have, oh yes, according to training manual 71.4, when the FBI shows up with a warrant, thankfully the FBI laid down their arms. Donald Trump put on Truth Social Wow, I just came out of the Biden witch hunt trial in Manhattan, the ice box, <laughs> and was shown reports that crooked Joe Biden's DOJ and their illegal and unconstitutional raid of Mar-a-Lago authorized the FBI to use deadly lethal force. Now we know for sure that Biden is a serious threat to democracy. He's mentally unfit to hold office, 25th Amendment. This could have ignited a civil war. Praise God it didn't. Is that what Merrick Garland wanted? Did Merrick Garland want to see a civil war spark? Is our federal government actively at war with its citizens? It certainly feels that way. It feels as if that the enemy is not the illegal invaders on the southern border or the Mexican drug cartels or the Chinese Communist Party, but no, it feels as if the enemy is us, is that they believe the domestic enemy is us. 
What if they would have shot Trump right there in the Mar-a-Lago living room? They had the green light to do that. Maybe that's what they wanted. None of us want to talk this way. We, we, we don't want to say that our government is at war with its citizenry. Why would not they say, hey, you know, look, you're a former president. You got a bunch of documents that we don't want. We have a search warrant. Here is your six hour notice. They say, oh, no, he would have destroyed the documents. You see, here's how it works. To get an authorization for a search warrant from a judge is a very high threshold. To raid a home is a high threshold. In order to get a judge to sign off on a warrant to raid a home, you need to show probable cause to the judge that if you do not have an imminent raid or an imminent intervention, that such evidence will be destroyed. That is the reason you have raids. So let's just take a diff- let's take an example. The west side of Phoenix, where there's plenty of drug dealers. And there's some guy running a cocaine operation. They could send him a letter saying, uh, sir, uh, by this date, by June 1st, uh, can you please send us all your business records? The guy's not going to listen, right? He'll destroy everything. He's a hardened criminal. So we've developed in, and we should, it, it should exist. We've developed in our processes the ability to raid private property, a protocol, if, if, If you can prove to the judge that if you don't raid, all that evidence will be destroyed. They'll be flushing cocaine down the toilet. They'll be incinerating documents, so on and so forth. It is supposed to be rarely and sparingly used. Merrick Garland personally requested this raid. I am not one to go out of my way to compliment the DC Uniparty Republicans. But I think that we should repeat ourselves and repeat ourselves. Thank you, Mitch McConnell, for not putting this craven, evil reptile on the United States Supreme Court. He could have. I'm just, you just I call balls and strikes here. I'm not a fan of the turtle, Mitch McConnell. McConnell made a decision to not fill that Supreme Court seat. Remember, we were told Merrick Garland is a very moderate man. He's a very moderate in his disposition. He ordered the raid. This is Merrick Garland's operation. And just so we're clear, from Janet Reno to Bob Mueller to Merrick Garland, all of these snakes have been around the FBI even before Oklahoma City, Ruby Ridge, Waco. They were all involved in these domestic issues. So it's not unheard of that Merrick Garland would also want to try to create a Waco 2.0. Let's just play this out before I play cut 85. What if the Secret Service said, no, you're not allowed to entry in here, actually. Our job is to protect the president. Would it have been a standoff, a shootout? What would the FBI have done? Well, they were ready. They had medics on scene in case there was a firefight. What is that? Our own government going at war against one another? This is is the stuff that happens in Nicaragua or in Senegal when a junta tries to take over. Play cut 85. There are, however, certain points I want you to know. First, I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Second, the department does not take such a decision lightly. He's a psychopath. Does he, does he get some sort of like thrill for mobilizing the Gestapo? You are living through a series of events and uh, developments where the American government, the administrative state, is at war with the sovereign. And it, ha- it hasn't started here. It's been bubbling up and bubbling up and bubbling up. He orchestrated, Merrick Garland is the designer and the architect, with Joe Biden's approval, obviously, potentially having FBI agents shooting at the United States Secret Service, a friendly fire shootout. And maybe Donald Trump or Melania or Barron or one of the campaign staff or one of his lawyers getting caught in the crossfire. 
I want you to imagine back in August of 2022, news reports that there is a firefight at Mar-a-Lago. Like, what country is this? You're the FBI. You call up the head of the Secret Service, and there is a head, by the way, and you say, we need to meet privately. You bring them into the FBI and say, look, we have this really tough, and by the way, they shouldn't have done the raid in the first place, but let's say you have to do this. We have this really tough situation. Can we navigate this? Can you just make sure the agents on scene know that this is going to happen? We want to make sure we get expedited entry. No, no, no. What if Merrick Garland was saying, eh, maybe we get entry or maybe we get Waco again and maybe Mar-a-Lago doesn't exist anymore. Wow, guys, this is a beautiful and lovely episode of Reaction. And I love the entertainment part and what you have to say encompasses everything. Like this is so beautiful to watch. And if you have something you want to add to it, do us drop it in the comment section. I'll be glad and excited to react to the comment that you've dropped on the channel regarding to it or you want me to react to any video of your choice do also drop it in the comment section i'll be anticipating your request and for all our viewers still thinking whether to subscribe or not what are you waiting for smash the like button turn on your post notification bell by subscribing so you don't miss out on any episode of reaction on the channel if you tend to support the good work you see on this channel all you just need to do is hit on the description you'll see a link buy me a coffee that way you tend to support us with any little of um, effort you want to support us with nothing is too small okay or you can super tank super chat us or you can also join our membership where you get exclusive perks from the channel so thank you for staying to this very moment i appreciate you all so come your way with another beautiful one do well to stay put stay safe stay subscribed for me to you it's a bye for now mm -hmm.